excited you're here worshiping with us today. Hey, whether you're watching online or you're right here with us in person, we invite you to stand to your feet. We're going to worship God big together today. Come on. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. In every fear, I lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? Yeah. For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. Do you believe that today? When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Thank you, God. That's right, there is hope in knowing that the battle belongs to God. You don't have to carry those struggles and those battles on your own, man. He is for you. He's got your back. He's fighting that battle on your behalf. Come on, he is worthy this morning, today and every day. He's worthy of our praise. Let's give it to him.
God, we lift you up this morning. We bring you praise for all you've done, God. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy because of who you are. There was a moment when the lights went out. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on the cross they made for sinners. For every curse his blood atoned. One final breath and it was finished. For the earth began to shake, and the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as the heavens roared?
Hey, can we give it up for Jesus this morning? Man, that's awesome. Don't you guys love that? All hail King Jesus. It's an honor, it's an opportunity to just come and just give our worship back to the God that created us and has given us purpose and lived and died for us. Man, did you guys enjoy Easter last week? Wasn't that cool? Man, it was so many blessings and it was so, so awesome. Hey, I want to just welcome you guys to Real Life here. Uh, we want to welcome everybody that's new in person or online. So we can give those guys just a huge round of applause, let them know that we love and we care about them. I've been excited to see what God's got for us today. Hey, I want you guys to take 30 seconds. So I want you to just uh, take that time and just welcome those around you. can go ahead and be seated. Oh, I got a little feedback there. Man, what an awesome morning. Hey, if you're new with us, I want you guys to know that you are our honored guest. We are so excited that you're here today. I would invite you, there's a connection card on your seat. You might be sitting on it, might be hidden, but go ahead and grab that. We would love for you to fill that out to your comfort level. And by marking the first time here, if you'll grab that and hang on to that, you have an opportunity to take that to the New Here booth on your way out. It's at the entrance. We would love to visit with you right there. Bring that to us. And we've got a small gift that we would love to give to you. Uh, just get connected with you. Our whole goal is just to make you feel home here at Real Life. And we're so glad that you're with us today. If you call Real Life home, this is an all skate moment. This is an opportunity for you as well. We would invite you also to fill out this connection card. There's a prayer request section on there. We love to go through those week in and week out. Our team goes over those and prays for those. And it's just a great way to stay connected here in real life and let us know what's going on in your life. Uh, you guys will have an opportunity to drop that off in the giving buckets at the end of the gathering. So real life's a church on a mission, aren't we guys? Yeah, there we go, church on a mission. A mission is this, to see people far from Jesus discover the real life and purpose of Jesus. And man, we saw that happen last week. We saw so many new people come in get connected to get connected to, to real life, get connected to their purpose, get connected to Jesus. We had so many people committed their life to Christ, which is so cool. I think we should give it up for those guys too. Can we get it up for everybody who made a decision for Jesus? It is so cool. So we love that and we are on that mission. And it kind of, it flows into what we're uh, gonna talk about today. One of the questions I get every once in a while is, you know, Barry, why did this happen to me? You know, why is my life falling apart? Can I let you know, even the best of us, people that look like they have it all together, sometimes even we get defeated, right? Sometimes we fall, sometimes we fail. And a lot of times we don't know what to do next. What's the next thing that we do? And we'll look to our friends, we'll look to the world, even we'll even, even look to the church. And we'll, what we try to do is we add in something to our routine. But maybe God's got something better. Maybe God's got a better starting point for you guys. And I want you guys to take this opportunity as we get into our next, uh, our next uh, message from the Ultra Work series and uh, welcome up Pastor Sean as he uh, gets us started off on the starting point uh, from the point of God in uh, Judges chapter 6. So give it up for Pastor Sean. Welcome to the 915. Come on somebody. Did y'all get your coffee? Apparently not. <laughs> yeah, I got my, uh, my got my Coke in the front row, so that's what I do. Coke, Coke, pass those Coke. Come on, it's gonna be good. What a, it's a good uh, starting point to this message, I guess. So, oh man, last week Easter Sunday, incredible. We're just gonna celebrate a little bit. Um, so I'll go through the data here. This is the, all every number is a story, right? So twelve people got baptized. Uh, Five hundred fifty-five people uh, came out in person, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, let's see, we had three people commit their life to Jesus that. Check the box on the card, and we had so many hands raised. Come on, somebody. That's amazing. That's why I do this whole thing. Uh, let's, people rededicated their life. Um, saw that across the board. Uh, 34, at least we know of, uh, first-time adults that came out new here, and uh, 17 first-time kids. So over 50 new people we, we actually knew. Come on, somebody. Um, so... Go Jesus. And that's the credit to you guys, uh, sharing, yard signs, posting, inviting, bring invitations. Uh, most people we followed up with were invited by somebody here already. Amen. 
Um, they see the stuff out there in social media, but you guys make the biggest difference. So thank you guys for inviting. Uh, we had a huge week of follow-up with all those people, and uh, every story, at least people got back, come on somebody, um, was really, really amazing. And uh, people felt welcomed, they felt at home. Uh, my neighbor, who we've been inviting to churches for the last decade, um, has never come and came last Sunday. And uh, he's been super responsive to everything. And uh, came over last night, we're hanging out. I was like, he did borrow some weed ear string and it turned into a two hour conversation in the driveway. And he was just super excited for um, our church. He was like, can't believe how welcome it was. Uh, I felt like church is always full of hypocrites and uh, I thought the building's gonna burn down. And uh, I said, well, it didn't burn down yet, you know? Um, but just just a, just a great family and uh, been just working on them and they're gonna be come back. So they're really excited about it. So praise God, amen. <laughs> it's the story we get to celebrate. And uh, you don't understand church until you bring somebody new with you, and uh, and it's just all different. Like, oh, it'll be the best message, the best worship, the best coffee. I mean, everything has to go well. And uh, it's just cool. God always moves in people's lives, and so just thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, you know, and we can do this every Sunday. Easter is just the uh, we celebrate Easter every Sunday, right? I mean, that's why it's on Sunday. Um, and so it's also a reminder of the things of God in our life every week. It's so easy to go off track and. Uh, this series we're launching into is just being one of those series that's uh, it's gonna be soul shaping series, and I'm just really excited about it. the series called Alter Work, and uh, we're gonna do a song at the end of the day um, that's really about altering our lives. Uh, so it's not just uh, showing up to church and uh, just going through the motions or you know just checking the boxes. Oh, I read my Bible. I went to Sunday morning, and it's easy as Christians to kind of fall into the pattern of adding things to our life. And the series is really about subtracting things. And so one thing things doing different today. It's gonna be really exciting. Uh, on the chairs around, you might notice this red Bible. Anybody got a Bible next to him? Hold up. See that red Bible? It's on the lot. There's about 16 of them out there. Nice, nice. All right. So we've been talking about this for a while. They, they were going to go old school. These are pew Bibles. Come on, somebody. Um, if you didn't bring the Word of God today, uh, maybe you forgot it. Maybe you don't have one. Um, maybe you just like, man, I, where, where's that? I can't find it. Um, grab this. Use it today. Amen. Um, and so we got them. Uh, we got, these are actually branded. Um, Holly herself, come on, somebody, throw down the place. <laughs> so if you want to brand something or someone, come on, somebody, go talk to Holly. We've had a lot of jokes this morning already. The setup team is kind of lining up, and it's going to be good. But anyway, <laughs> Jan is over there just, like, trying to keep it together. Um, but this series, Alter Work, it, you get this question all the time as a pastor, and it's, it's a really innocent question. It's a great question, and I love answering this question, but this is the most popular question I, I get as a pastor, and it's simply this, where do I start? Where do I start? Like, I, I want to rebuild my life. I've, I've kind of messed it up and down the road long enough. I don't want to repeat the same cycle. Or you just start a relationship with Jesus, and you're like, I don't know where to go in the Bible. I, I just don't know where to start at all. I'm trying to find my footing. Um, I've been showing up for a little bit at church, but I, I just something I'm missing. Like, what should I be doing? I, I want to get it right. Amen. And so they, they're asking us, like, what, what do we do? Where do we go? And uh, really, the answer to this question is um, is going to sound really odd to you, and it's going to sound really weird. Okay, because it's not what you typically think. So I'm, I'm not going to say you start. Just don't start with just reading the Bible. Don't just read the Bible, amen? Because you just read the Bible, you're going to miss something. And I, I'm not saying you shouldn't read the Bible, because you should read the Bible, amen? But I'm just saying you, your, your first step isn't necessarily to read the Bible. Uh, think about this. Satan himself knows every verse. Come on, somebody. Like, I know a lot of people. I went to Bible college, you know what I mean? I know a lot of people who can quote the Scripture and look nothing like Jesus. I, I know a lot of people who can weaponize the Scripture and just be judgmental and not be transformed, I know a lot of people know the Bible. I know a lot of people who can worship the Bible. All right, I've been around religion, right? So it's not just about reading the Bible. It, it's not, you don't start with prayer, although I think you should pray, amen. But I'm not saying it's the very first thing. It's, it's, it's right there. Like as you're, that right there, that, there was prayer, you know what I mean? It, it's a part of it, but it's not maybe the first thing. I wouldn't say the first thing is to go to church. First step isn't showing up on a Sunday morning to church. That, that's not your first step. Now you should go to church, amen? Amen? Yeah. I mean, you all here, you know. Um, and you should be involved in the body of believers and get past the spirituality, like I don't need all these people in my life, you know. Um, there's another message, to, that's a different message for another day, right? Um, but like, get, should I get accountability people in my life, people who know me and hold me accountable and stuff? Like, not the first step, but you should have people in your life that do that, amen? You should have people that pray for you, know what's going on, who, who can know when you're messing up and they love you back to Jesus and you give them full permission to speak in your life and smack you around a little bit. Come on, somebody. You got to have people like that. that. Barry's my guy, so if you talk to Barry, I'm doing something, let him know, and he can smack you around. Come on. Where's he at? He's not even here to enjoy this. 
Oh, he's back there. <laughs> I figured I'd hear a big amen. <laughs> but I told Barry when we launched the church, I said, if I get stupid, you have permission to go back out, take me out back and beat me. You know what I mean? And um, that's just, that's a freebie for you. But um, you have people in the life, right? But that's not your first step. Uh, and all this sounds kind of awkward, right? Because these are all the things we're, we're like trying to add in, right? Like go into life group, being a part of Bible study, going to church, reading your Bible. And we can easily turn following Jesus into a checklist, right? We, we can easily fall in Jesus. Uh, take following Jesus and start adding all this stuff to our life. We, we can say, if I, if I do all these things and I work hard enough, then I'll be where I need to be. And it's actually quite the opposite. Uh, matter of fact, when you, when you start walking with Jesus, your first step isn't actually a step forward. Your first step is actually a step backwards. Matter of fact, you don't add things to your life. You actually subtract things from your life. And so today I'm gonna encourage you, your first thing you should do as you're walking with Jesus, and this isn't just for new Christians. This is a reminder for all of us because it's easy to go through the motions you should go build an altar. You should go somewhere you can kneel down, and then when you get up, there's less of you that comes up. Your first step is to get in front of God. You can easily not commune with God, but do the things of God. You, you can look the part, but not be the part. You, you, you can watch the things, you can even quote the scripture, but not actually walk with God. You can actually do the work of God. You can set up this building, and you can read your Bible, and you can come on Sundays, and you go to life group, all this stuff, and you cannot worship God. You can do work without worship. You guys ever been there before? It, it's just called going through the motions. And if you're like a servant of God, you've been around a while, you're like, ah, this isn't for me. I already know this stuff. Come on, somebody, right? Like I've heard before, um, I'm gonna get ahead of myself, so I'll, I'll just stick to my notes because <laughs> so much I'm gonna say, right? But we're gonna jump in to, to Judges chapter six, and um, we're gonna talk about what it is to be at an altar. And if you need a Bible, there's some on your, on your pews there, but Judges 6 will be in verse 25. And you know, think about an altar, an altar in the Bible, you see them all across the Bible. In this whole series, we're gonna talk about altars all throughout the Bible. So every week you're gonna hear about another altar or maybe a couple altars. And today we're gonna see an altar in Judges 6. And this is our boy Gideon. You guys remember Gideon? Okay, so we went through a series you knew with us just a little while ago and the walking through the Hall of Fame of Faith and Gideon is one of those guys listed. And so we're going through part of his story. But you think about an altar in the Bible, an altar is built for a certain purpose. An altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of offering. Um, you see sometimes a place of remembrance. God does something amazing, something incredible and to build an altar to remember the power of God and the presence of God and a place where God did something big. Um, it, it's a place where you see the power of God move. It's a place where it reminds you that you need God. And that's where you see altars all across the Bible. So this is one of those altar moments that Gideon's gonna have. And uh, if you know the story of Gideon, I'll kind of run into it a little bit. Um, the, the nation he's uh, living in, and the Israelites, they're basically under attack all the time. He's lost his faith. You guys remember the story? He's in a wine press and he's threshing wheat. And the Lord shows up to him. He says, uh, the Lord is with you, mighty. Hey, come on, you guys are good, right? The 915's awake, you know what I mean? The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And there's nothing about Gideon at this moment. Looked like a warrior, didn't look mighty. Um, he's doing the complete opposite thing you'd ever do. He's basically hiding. He's, he's faithless. It, on every level you'd say that's kind of cowardly. It's kind of all these things. But he says already he's a mighty warrior. He kind of calls him his potential. And the first place that God sends him, up there, there's some conversations take place. But if you remember in the story, God sends him somewhere very specific. And it's his first battle. And it wasn't out to fight an army, but it was out to fight something different. Do you guys remember where he went first in the story? He, he went back home. You guys remember that? And this is what it says in, in, in uh, Judges um, 6.25. By the way, Judge, you can't find it. It's the seventh book. So just keep, you start at the beginning, go right, you'll find it quickly. But um, this is what it says in Judges 6.25. It says, tear down, and it's on the screen if you have your Bible, but tear down your what? Your, yeah, your father's altar. This is very interesting. And he says, your father's altar, and the altar says, is to Baal and cut down the Asher pole beside it. So he has two things. He says, tear down your father's altar to Baal, and I want you to cut down the Asher pole, almost like a totem pole, just a, just a, just a trunk of tree, you know? And uh, the, these are false gods. Uh, Baal and, and Asherah, these are like the goddess and the god of fertility. This is something that Gideon would have worshiped his entire life. This was his identity. If Gideon were to go place to, to worship and, and find solace and to pray, it would be at these altars. This was his DNA. This is how he grew up. This was an idol in his life. And so the first thing that happens with Gideon is that God says, I want you to go home. I want you to go back where you're from. 
I don't want you to go out and take a step forward and fight an army, which he will do. I want you to take a step back and I want you to do something on the inside. I want you to go declare for yourself that you're no longer worshiping these idols. Uh, this is a step of, can I use the word repentance, right? At the opening of Jesus' ministry, it started like this in the New Testament, if you don't know the verse. It said, repent and believe for the kingdom of God is near. The first step we take, and we always take, and we never leave taking, is a step of repentance. Amen? And for, and for Gideon, th this is that step. He, he says, you're going to be a mighty warrior for God. Go back home and tear down the altar. It starts with a step backwards. Go back to where your identity was formed. Find those things in your life that you've been worshiping, that you've been standing on, that you've been in love with, that you've got your validation from, that you've been idolizing, that your identity's warped around. And I want you to say, this is, belongs to the Lord. I want you to take that and cut it down. And you're going to do something very specific right here in a minute. He says, go face your demons. Uh, a matter of fact, go face some people because he's not even tearing down his altar. He's tearing down his his father's altar. Come on, somebody. That, that, that's impressive, man. He's going to go home and he's going to face the old man. Right? That's a hard battle. Is it not? To, to, to tell your family and people you're close to, maybe you're friends with, and people you're related to, and you've done it the whole way your whole life, and say, you know what? I'm no longer about this. I actually serve the living God. So this is going the trash can. Amen? Hey, sorry I didn't tell you sooner, but uh, I've been changed by Jesus. Amen? That, that's a step we have to take because we can't worship at two altars, right? And this is what Gideon's gonna do. He's gonna tear down this altar. He's gonna face the false gods in his life. And uh, you might be thinking right now, like, um, man, I can't do that. And the reality is this, we all have altars in our past, amen? We all have altars that we've worshiped. We all have false gods that we've knelt down to. You know, that has been so like, there's not this statue out front for most of us, right, or this pole. But we, we idolize things we shouldn't idolize. And we have ideology, or ideologies and beliefs and, and things in our hearts that we grew up with. And uh, we, we have strongholds in our life, amen? Can we just be real today? And we hold on to those things and they're sacred and you're thinking, well, if I, if I go home, um, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna kick me out. Uh, or or if, I, if I change the way I'm living, what is it gonna think about me? Or if I, if I don't do it that way again, then I'm gonna be different. I'm gonna stand out, I'm gonna be a Jesus freak. I'm not, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I'm strong enough. I, I've tried before, I've failed. I've tried to tear down these altars before. I know it's not right, but I just don't have the, the strength. And can I just give you a little word today? The Lord is with you. Come on, somebody. That was the promise that Gideon got. The Lord is with you. See, before Jesus, you couldn't tear down that altar, right? You just can't build a different one anyway. But with Jesus, you have the power of God to replace the altar, amen? There's some things in our past. There's some addictions. There's some things you walk through. And by the power of God, you can walk up the altar and be like, you have the chainsaw. Where's the steel chainsaw? I should brought it up today. Come on, somebody. That would been legit. That with the smoke detectors go off, it'd be awesome, dude. You know, like just for Jesus, right? And we can do this, right? Amen? Like today's really about seeking out in your own heart, where's an idol? Where have we been worshiping? Because we're not worshiping him, we're worshiping something, right? And it's always, it's easy to creep in. Even if you've been following Jesus for a long time, it's easy to find yourself going back to that place of maybe anger or unforgiveness or hurt or envy or like maybe I want to be somewhere but I'm not and you're upset with yourself, like prove yourself, like all these things that we try to put at an altar and, and God says, no, no, I'll tear it down. We, we have those past altars, but God is with us. And this is amazing what God asked him to do, verse 26. It says, you tear it down, and he says, then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord God, your God, on top of this height. He wants you to build a proper altar on the height. And if you think about an altar, and in Latin altar actually is a height. It's a, usually in the Old Testament, you're gonna, they're usually made out of wood, but you'll see a lot of altars are made of stone. It's like a smooth place. And you go up and you make sacrifices to the Lord. You offer yourself a place of remembrance. And so it's interesting. He says, make a proper kind of altar. And look what he says to do. He says, using the wood, this is very specific, of the Asher pole that you cut down, offer the second bowl as a burnt offering to, to, to the Lord. He, he's basically saying that you need to take the idols in your past and you need to turn them to altars. Amen? T -t -take, take the thing that you are worshiping and cut it up on the altar of God, pile up the wood of the idol, and then burn an offering to God. Offer yourself, offer those areas that your life that you've given over to something else, and offer it back to God. 
Tur- turn an idol to an altar. Isn't that amazing to think about? I, I, you can tell when somebody, by the way, does this, because when you tear down an idol and you, can, you worship differently, amen? You ever talk to somebody who's overcome something in Jesus' name? You ever talk about somebody who's broken free from an addiction, whether it was some kind of drug or alcohol or pornography or just themselves, they're just an angry person and there's just this freeing thing. You start talking to them, all of a sudden, they just start to worship because they burn that idol down, Amen? But, but if you're not constantly looking for idols, you're gonna find yourself, you might just find yourself back worshiping one, right? And so today's kind of a call, like get back to the altar. Like find that thing in your life and cut it down today and then get on the altar with God and say, thank you, Lord. I'm sorry I made it about myself. Uh, we were talking about this earlier guy in our church and uh, it took 30 days for them to make the golden calf. Split the Red Sea, 30 days. That's what his church every Sunday, come on somebody, right? It's so easy for us to move from the things of Jesus to the, to the things that are ourselves. But we look the part like nobody knows. We got the Christian t-shirt, got the cross, got the tattoo. We talked about that a little bit ago, right? Got it all ready to go. We look like this thing. But the reality is our hearts can be far from God, right? And so this is a call to get back to the altar of God. We can fall into the trap of adding Christianity to our to-do list. Uh, we can start going to church, start reading our Bible. We can start praying. I do my my old school Beth Moore Bible study, come on somebody, right? Got my version thing going. Like we can do all these things and, and you should do those things, amen? But if that's what you do without an altar, you're not worshiping. There's a difference between singing a song and worshiping God. There's a difference between reading your Bible and communion with God. There's a difference between working and worshiping. And you can do the part, but not be the thing. And so today's a call to be who God's called you to be, not do the thing that God has called you to do. That flows out of obedience to God. And so we don't simply add Christianity. What we do is we build an altar and we get before God. And uh, it's easy to leave the altar, isn't it? It's easy to get bored of the altar. Like, I didn't see anything new, and we did this last week, and I was so distracted by all the things that broke. Come on, somebody. I started my mower up this year, and uh, guess what? No compression in one cylinder. Come on, somebody. No. It's going to be one cylinder kind of year, baby. I'm going to keep it going, you know. <laughs> it's going to cut half speed. It's going to be great, you know. Uh, but, you know, here's the call today. Alter your altars. Amen? Like, we, we've been at some altars that need to be changed. This has been the wrong altar. Like, we've been worshiping the wrong thing. We've been putting our life and our stock and our energy and our emotional being, our state, our countenance, our best of ourselves at an altar that's really not built for God. And so today is a call to go back to the proper altar for Jesus. You might say, what's this altar look like? And it, it's very interesting. Um, I, I would say this. It, in the New Testament, it, it's not a place. Okay, like you don't have to like, this can be an altar. You know, I would encourage you to come to the altar. Every part of this series, there's gonna be a song at the end. And this makeshift, temporary, almost dishonoring to God t- stage. <laughs> come on, it's gonna be an altar, right? <laughs> We're gonna do it. But, but that's, that's not, altar's really not a place. It, it's really not in a position, although you, you can kneel down. It, it's actually a posture, an altar is a posture. It's a posture of your heart. It's a posture of surrender. It's a posture of obedience. It's a posture of submission. Yes, Lord. You know, when you get saved, you never get past you got saved, right? When you held on to the old rugged cross, you never let go of it. Amen? Like everything starts with that obedience to remember, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Dude, I'm so undeserving. There's stuff in my life that needs to change. And so during the worship set, the song part of the worship set, come on somebody. That's what I'm doing up here, amen? Is I, I've got an altar in my heart. I'm just surrendering myself to God. I'm reminding of the words that, that are being spoken. It's like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm getting my heart right before God. And you can do that anywhere, amen? You don't have to come on Sunday to do that. You should constantly be in communion with God, walking with God, have an altar inside your heart built already. Now, I was 18 years old, I went to a youth camp. Matter of fact, it's the same youth camp that our church is going to this summer. Um, we're going old school. Come on, somebody. And uh, it's down at John Brown University, um, Salem Springs, Arkansas, North Arkansas. It's not too far away. And Thursday morning at that camp, this, after I graduated high school in 03, I went to a summer camp, and I was just, like, wrestling God of what to do with my life. And uh, there's a speaker that Thursday morning, and he just, just really shared something very simple. And it was, if God can send the son to tell the world about himself, why can't you go tell somebody else? And through that one sentence, uh, it just broke my heart. It was the spirit of God, right? And I just put myself with the altar with God and this wrestling. It's like, you know, I'm making this all about me. I'm gonna spend my life on myself. I'm gonna do it my way. That's what I've been choosing with my life. But today I'm just gonna do it your way, Lord. I have no idea what that looks like. That's scary, right? 
I don't have a blueprint. I just got a God, and that's enough. And so I remember going out the door of that chapel, and um, by, there's this, I don't know what type of tree, but there's a tree, a little thin tree, and it had some mulch around it, and the sun shined down. It's in the morning, right? It's probably like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning. And I remember praying next to this tree. That tree was an altar, amen? I made that an altar that morning. And I surrendered my life to God. And uh, I was already saved, but that is the moment that I, I, I truly died to myself. That's what's called lordship, right? Like just no longer I hold the keys. There was a secret part of my heart that I was holding on to. And I just said, okay, Lord, you can take it. I was crying by that tree. Didn't have to water that day. You know what I mean? And uh, long story longer, come on, somebody. Um, Diane actually, my wife, Diane, we weren't married at the time. We weren't dating at the time. We were good, good friends. But she was at that camp, and that was the same sentence, the exact same sentence that she knelt down for herself and built herself on the altar and started her life. Come on, somebody. And we had no idea what God was doing behind the scenes. That, we didn't know that story existed for years and years and years. But the reality is you can make an altar anywhere. Anywhere? A- amen? Anywhere. Uh, your lazy boy could be an altar. Come on, somebody. I've got a pastor buddy of mine. He, he, sit, he sits in, the, his, in his garage with just a fold-out chair, like smokes cigars, wears his cowboy hat because his wife won't let him smoke in the house. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. And he, he communes with God every night, 9 o'clock, and just walks with Jesus. He makes an altar there. You can make an altar anywhere. Matter of fact, I have a good buddy of mine who uh, made a toilet an altar. Come on, somebody. Actually came to Christ on the toilet. Believe that or not. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, I'm serious. Um, but you guys spend a lot of time on the toilet with your phones. You know what I'm saying? You get a lot of thinking done on there. So um, I'm just being real today. Anywhere you go, any place, you're in the car, you get a song going, um, you need to take some time for yourself. It's important to remember to put yourself in submission to God as you walk through the day. If your flesh gets the best of you, it's because you've left the altar, right? And you got to find the altar with God. And uh, you can make these, uh, these pews, these chairs, come on, an altar. You, you can make any place an altar in your life. And so it's not about position. It's about a posture before God. It's just remembering what the Lord's done for you and just being grateful and then surrendering yourself, submitting yourself to things of God. So in the New Testament, uh, they give us a little bit of a, what is a proper altar in the New Testament. You know, back then they had a proper altar in the Old Testament. What's it look like in the New Testament? And so we're going to jump over to the book of Romans. And so Romans chapter 12, uh, this is interesting enough. I don't know why I know this, but this is the seventh book of the New Testament. So we're the seventh book of the Old Testament, now seventh book of the New Testament. I'm like, okay, God, you must got something going here. Um, but Romans 12, 1, it's a super popular verse. If you don't know it, you can get to know it today. But it says this. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. Now, what, what this is saying is therefore, there's a reason it's therefore, come on somebody. And it's really the first 11 chapters, he summarizes really what God has done for us and how Jesus came for us and we're saved through faith alone and Christ alone and how as Gentiles, we, the grace has been given to us and we get a relationship with Jesus. And he takes those first 11 chapters and he summarizes them into these few words. He says, in view of God's mercy, in the, in, the, in the lie of the fact that we've disobeyed God, we've worshiped false idols, we've done our own thing apart from Jesus, but God's mercy is that he died for us, that he made a way that we could be saved, that we're forgiven, that we don't get what we deserve. That's mercy. That's when, that's when somebody knocks over pipe and drape and hits a TV and you're like, hey, don't worry about it. Forgive you, brother. <laughs> Come on, somebody. that may have happened, right? Uh, but that's just mercy, right? Like, hey, you know what? Don't worry about it, right? Um, that stuff happens. But, but that's mercy. Somebody comes over and they hit your car and you're like, hey, don't, I'll take care of it. That's mercy. And what Jesus did, he took care of our sin and he covered it by his great mercy, amen? How many, how many know God is rich in mercy? You guys know that today? You guys feel that today? It, it's the mercy of God. If you don't know that, go back and read the first 11 chapters of Romans because that's all what it's about. But he says, therefore... I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. Hello. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I need to get more sleep. That 915 came early, you know what I mean? That was your alarm to actually get up, <laughs> right? So, oh, man. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer, what to say, to offer what? Your bodies. Uh, to offer your flesh, to offer yourself, to offer the human side of you, all of you, as a what? What's it say? A, oh, there you go, a living sacrifice. Yeah, in in the Old Testament, you'd sacrifice an animal on an altar, sheep, a ram, goat, even doves, different things. But in the New Testament, 
you sacrifice yourself on the altar. Man, this now this is getting kind of serious today, Pastor, right? You're supposed to present yourself, offer yourself, your bodies as a living sacrifice. And this is what happens is as a holy offering that's pleasing to God. And then he goes on to say, this is your true and proper worship. It's very interesting, these words. I want to just unpack this. So living sacrifice, this is interesting. In the Old Testament, required by law, that you would go to the temple, you'd make sacrifices, the priest would do on your behalf, and you'd be made pure in front of God. You'd get right with God for that season, for that year. You'd, you'd be cleansed from your sin. That was a picture of what God was doing. But in the New Testament, it's not the law, it's not the law that requires you to make a sacrifice. It's actually mercy. Because of God's mercy, it requires you. Is it, if you understand God's mercy, then you will become a living sacrifice. And you see, you sacrifice yourself on the altar of God. And since God has shown mercy on me, I offer myself fully to him. It's no longer my agenda, my plan, my, my personal dream for myself. It's my, my direction, my desire. I'm no longer satisfied with empty idols built with human hands or for self-worship or for praise. Amen? But because of God's mercy, my life is all just putting glory to him, just making him famous, making his name renowned, worshiping him because of what he's done for me. And so worship always starts with the cross. Amen? It always starts to remind us that you are this big and God is this big, but yet he laid himself down for us. Amen? That he loved us even though we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We can never get past the fact that we don't get what we deserve. We, we get Jesus. We, we get the grace of God. We get the Holy Spirit. We get the power of God. And for that, we were ever grateful and thankful, and we could worship out of that. And so we lay down ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. Um, this is what happens with living sacrifice. When you guys go to the altar, it doesn't have to be a, a church altar like, like this, right? But when you go to the altar, every time you get up from the altar, there's less of you that gets up. Every time you kneel down, there's less of Sean Petrie that comes up. There's a little more of Jesus every time I lay down something. You guys ever feel that? That, that burden lifted? You guys are looking for that in your life. Like, where do I start? What do I do? It's like, just put down the things you've been carrying. Let Jesus, he already carried those things on Calvary. And just get up. You say, I'm, I'm chosen by God. I'm a son of God. You remind yourself of who you are in Jesus. And all of a sudden, you walk differently, you talk differently, you worship differently. You don't skip the worship. You don't skip the songs. Amen? Because God's doing something in your life. There's a living sacrifice. Every time you get to the altar, there's less of you and more of him. Uh, the reality is this. If you go to church and you're going through the motions of Christianity, the, the way you'll know is, is that you're unaltered. Right? If you know you're going through the motions, if you go through all those stuff and you do all the pieces, you check the boxes, and yet you're still the same, right? And you find it really easy that you're unaltered because you're unaltered. Come on, somebody. There's an E and A difference, right? You're untransformed because you're actually not building an altar for yourself. Like, I can't build you an altar. Like, so many times pastors, like, they want pastors to, like, fix their life. And it's like, Jesus fixed your life. I point to him and you build yourself on an altar and get it for Jesus, I guarantee you, your life will be well beyond anything I could ever tell you to do, right? It's what Jesus wants to do in your life. And so you just gotta get back to the altar. If you don't be altered, get to the altar. Come on, somebody. I'm gonna keep saying it. Altar, 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 it's great, right? Um, if you're stagnant in your faith, here's another thought for you. You may be in the right position, but the wrong posture. You might be in the right place, but the wrong posture. You, you, you actually may be in, at church, but you got the wrong posture. You're in the right place, like you're ready to hear the word of God, receive from God, but your heart isn't right towards God. Who knows, you can show up from yelling at the kids in the car, come on somebody, right? And you can be upset. And what, that's why I love to worship, by the way, because like setup is kind of crazy and things break every Sunday. Where's my setup team, right? I mean, I got Magnus don't stick to the ceiling. Barry's over there starting to cuss at people. He's trying to hurt me. He didn't cuss, but he did it inside his heart. I could tell. All right. <laughs> we got, we got, you, got you, you name it, right? There's, there's a lot of things that happen when you're portable that could distract you from what God wants you to do. And we can come here full of noise and distraction and built on all these things and just like, oh, right? And what happens is when you start hearing the word of God and you start seeing the worship and you remind yourself, you got to get there. You got to find a way to get there all the time. It's like, oh, dude, it's all good. Jesus is good, man. Like, God is good. This rest of the stuff, we'll take care of it, right? By God's mercy, by God's grace. Like, we're not worried about all that stuff, right? That's just, that's just going to burn up anyway, you know what I mean? Like, but what happens in transformation of heart doesn't change, amen? 
And so we got to get quickly back to the cross. Like, we can get in our flesh. Like, Satan knows where your buttons are, right? And so you can be in the right place in the wrong posture. You, you can actually be praying in the wrong posture. You ever feel like your prayers hit, hit the ceiling? God, I don't feel you. God, I don't see anything. It, it, are you at an altar when you pray? Where, where are you in your heart when you pray? Like, what's your posture? It, 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 everything changes with the right posture. When you read your Bible in the right posture, it's amazing what you see. You, you cannot read the Bible and not see something new unless you're not an altar, right? If you're just gonna check the boxes and go, well, I read through that chapter, check the box, uh, or read that verse, you're probably not gonna get anything out of it, let's be real. But, but if you get to the altar and you just sit there and say, God, just show me something, and you read that, it's like God, the Holy Spirit teaches you, Amen. Trust me, I'm, I'm nothing compared to what he's going to show you. You've got to get in the book, right? But you've got to be in the right posture. You pray in a posture. You know, you can, you can actually be in the right place, and you can actually hear this amazing worship team, by the way, and you can sing the song and be in the wrong posture and just sing and not worship. You guys been there? You just go through the motions. You can know the words and not worship. Come on, somebody. And so you can check the boxes super easily. Yeah, here's the reality. When you go, it all starts at an altar, right? When you came to Jesus. And I want to encourage you guys to stay at the altar. Like, don't ever leave the altar. That's your starting place. That's every place. That's, it's, that's everything. Like, you don't leave the altar because, uh, well, it's, it's, it's 1030 or 1015. It's time to go home. Come on, somebody, right? Like, the altar is always part of your life. And you'll find those moments where you're in the flesh is you've walked away from the altar. And so today's kind of a thing for us as Jesus followers to get back to the altar, Right? Sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. You know, Matt Redman uh, has, a, has a song called The Heart of Worship. You guys ever heard that song? You know what I'm talking about, right? Matt Redman, he had a church out in London. If you listen to the guy, he's got an awesome accent, right? And uh, I do love some Matt Redman, you know. We're going to throw old school on that. It's like 2000, you know what I mean? And uh, his church wasn't worshiping, they were singing. And so he, he canceled the songs. Come on, somebody. Somebody like, yeah, right? And, uh, and instead of singing, they, they stood in silence, 15, 20 minutes. He says, get your heart right in front of God. We're talking months. And out of that time of like communion with God, getting at their own altars, he actually wrote the song, Heart of Worship. Come on, somebody. Sorry, Lord, for the thing, I've made it. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I've made this whole thing about me. I'm so sorry, Lord. He wrote a song of repentance he built an altar for his church, amen? And, and that's what this call is, right? Like to, to, to get back to the heart of what God's doing. And you can say, well, I don't like the style or I don't like this. Like, bro, I'll sing whatever you want to sing, brother. Like you want to go a gospel quartet? I'll sing to a gospel quartet. I've seen the big eyes, thick glasses, weird, you know, sweat. I've seen all. Come on, somebody, right? I love some gospel quartet. We'll do it. I've, I've sung hymns. I'll, I'll sing whatever style because it's not the style, amen? It's worship, you'd be surprised you get to heaven, you're gonna find some, some different styles of worship there. Come on, somebody, <laughs> right? Like, we, let's just get to the altar, amen? Like, sometimes like, oh, that's not my favorite song, but you know what? It's my favorite God, amen? Like, I don't care, we're gonna move past the song, we're gonna find Jesus. And that's what this is all about, just getting back to the heart of worship. I feel like a lot of people have left the altar. I feel, I feel like American Christianity in general is really good at finding things to do and deleting going to the altar, deleting walking with the Lord for business and nothing like personal. But there's a lot, of, a lot of reasons why people just kind of walk away and don't really build an altar for themselves. And it's kind of my fear as a pastor to see so many people kind of maybe go through the motions, right? And we've all been guilty of that in different seasons or in places, but we are responsible for our own faith journey. Amen? Like we, we, it's a culture of self-feeders. Like we got to feed ourselves, right? And the thing is the Lord is with you. Amen? Gideon said he couldn't do it, and the Lord said, you bring your best, I'll bring my best, and my best is good enough. Like, you just do what you're called to do, and I'll take care of you. We can overcomplicate our walk with God by adding things rather than subtracting things. We can, we can forget the whole thing and get busy with all the work of the ministry and forget that it's just about worshiping Jesus. He just wants to walk with you, amen? He wants to talk with you. I feel like singing to him, you know what I mean? Getting back to the heart of this whole thing. I always feel like, man, just give me a reason to build an altar, amen? Like when there's song of worship going on, I feel like I'm not doing it justice, justice if I'm not at the altar. Like I, I feel like I'm just, I don't wanna go through the motions. Like I don't, I don't play God to be a fool. I don't play myself to be a fool. And so when there's like a reason to go, I'm just gonna go, amen? 
Like if there's a, the reason to worship, I'm just gonna find myself there. That's the most important place we could be is at the feet of Jesus. Every day we gotta get to the altar, read your Bible, go to the altar, pray at the altar, worship at the altar. We give at the altar, amen? That's, what we, that's why we give. And uh, you know, I, I've talked to many people and, and it's interesting, like, I don't need the worship. I told you to get there today, you know? And I don't need, I don't need, I don't need the worship. I, 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 it's good enough. I've done it before. I know, I know where it's at. I'm here for the preaching, you know, not that my preaching's any good, but people come for it. Right. And, and I'm like, I think you've kind of maybe missed it. You know, like the, the point of church was to get to Jesus. The point of the message is to get to Jesus. The point of worship is to get to Jesus. Amen. Like it all points to Jesus. And when you say like, I don't need the songs, it's, it's almost like saying like, hey, I've spent so much time at the altar this week, I don't need to be at the altar anymore. And we all know that's not true. Come on, somebody. Because if you've been at the altar, you use every reason in the world to get back to the altar. Amen? When you're changed by Jesus, you get back to the altar. And what's happened is you just replaced a place or a position, that, that time, that 15 minutes at the beginning, they've thought that was worship. <laughs> and their posture isn't right. And they've mistaken the two. And so we had to get back to the altar even more. And that's what happens to worship. It says in Romans 12, 1, therefore urge your brothers and sisters and view God's mercy. We offer your bodies, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, which is holy and pleasing to God. And this is your true and what? Proper worship. It, it's interesting. Uh, in the Old Testament, you were to build a proper altar. In the New Testament, you'd have proper worship. And where does proper worship happen? <laughs> At an altar. Amen. The Bible says you lay down your life as a living sacrifice. And when you do that, that's holy. That's pleasing to God. And that is true and proper worship. And, and so maybe we're just used to singing a song, right? But true worship is laying yourself down. Like the, your heart has built an altar and you've laid down the altar and you sacrifice yourself to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry I made it by myself. Lord, I need you. God, I trust you. God, strengthen me. God, use me. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's what happens at the altar, amen? That's true and proper worship. Listen to this. Proper worship can't take place apart from a proper altar. You, you cannot worship Jesus properly without a proper altar. It is impossible. It is impossible to worship Jesus on an idol. It's, it's impossible to worship Jesus if you haven't changed your heart. You can put your hands in the air. Come on, somebody. You can do all the things on the outside, but your heart can be far from God. Proper worship happens after you do something in your heart. That's the proper worship to Jesus, amen? What, what would be different in your life today? Like how would Jesus feel? Would it put a smile on his face? If you walked out here today and there's part of you that just died, right? And Jesus goes, yes, they're growing, they're transformed. If you go today and you find an, alt, an idol in your life, you cut it down and you give it to God on the altar, I guarantee you, you walk out here transformed today. Amen. And if you can't find an idol, you're not looking very hard because it just comes so naturally to find them. Think, think about this. Satan was the first worship leader. You guys know that? He led, he led the praise team in heaven. Do you guys know that? He was in charge of all the angels, all the worship, and he, he, he got full of himself. Think about Satan. He, he had the right position, right? He's actually on staff. You know what I'm saying? Right? And he, he, he had the, I like that song. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to get some country music going now. Oh, man. I got my George Strait radio on my Spotify, so don't hate me. You know what I mean? But it's all good. Um, but you think about Satan. He, he, was, he was in the right position. He's actually in the right place. He's where he should be. He was in the presence of God. He was in charge of all these other angels. But he was in the wrong posture. Amen. He started taking worship for himself. He started thinking he was big. He started thinking, I can do it better than this guy. And so he took worship for himself. And we all know what happened in the story of Satan, right? And it's easy to alter our, the altar to about ourselves and we can just make it about us. But today we can make it about Jesus, amen? And so I wanna show you the altar that's gonna be in eternity. And this is found in Re uh, Revelation chapter four. And uh, I told you it starts with an altar and it's gonna end with an altar. And this is the altar you're gonna find. So hello, welcome to the stage. It's gonna be awesome. Revelation four, this is what it says, verse two. We track along. Revelation, the very last book in the Bible, so I started on that side. Revelation four, two, it says this. At once I was in the spirit, this is John, and there before me was a throne 
you might even call this an altar. There's a throne and there's an altar around the throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. He says, and the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white, had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and perils of thunder. And from the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. And in the center around the throne were four, four living creatures. They were covered their eyes in the front, or covered the eyes in the front and the back. And the first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. And the fourth was like a flying eagle. And each of the four living creatures had six wings and was and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. And day and night, they never stopped saying. They never stopped worshiping, amen? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. I can keep going. Because this is the song of heaven. This worship is actually happening in heaven right now. Can you hear it? You feel it? Holy, holy, holy is Lord. God is a God of being worshiped on an altar in heaven. And this is a song that we get to see when we go to heaven, amen? The glory of God. And, and, and to just imagine this sight so far is unimaginable in our minds to see these creatures flying and the worship occurring. And it goes on to say, whatever living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne and he who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne. And what do they do? Do you guys see it? They, they worship him. They worship him who lives forever and ever. And they lay down their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, O Lord and God, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you create all things and by your will they're created and have their being. And over and over, they take their crowns and they lay them back at the feet of Jesus and they give praise and honor and glory and worship to Jesus over and over and over. I told you guys, it starts an altar. That's where you came to Jesus. You repented, you, you bent the knee, you found that posture in your heart. It all ends at altar, amen? It all ends at altar. The reality is it all ends at altar whether you know Jesus or not. The Bible says, for every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God of the, of the Father. Every person who knows Jesus or doesn't know Jesus in eternity will bow their knee to Jesus, amen? So the, the, the whole question of the day is really this, what do you do in the middle? What do you do right now in this little dash of life? You get those 60 years, 50 years, 40 years, you get this little sprint, you get this little dash between the dates. You guys gonna build an altar? Come on, somebody. You gonna find yourself communing with God, walking with God, getting the right posture with God, because you're gonna end up at an altar anyway. Come on, somebody. Are you gonna build an altar today? Are you gonna be at an altar today? It's got to be pushing that place. You don't have to be the smartest person, know much about the Bible. You just got to know Jesus, amen? And you know enough to build yourself an altar and say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done. This is what changes us. This is what people see in us that they want to have, but they don't know what it is. And it's like, dude, I'm just submissive to the Father, and God just uses my life. And people are scratching their head going, but what's, what's different about you? It's like, it's just Jesus, amen? And so today, we're going to ask God, and we're going to open these altars up. There'll be a song here in a little bit. And just let you guys pray. Build an altar in your heart. Not just come up here, but build an altar in your heart and see what God can do. If I come before you, God, pray for our church. God, your church has built an altar for you, God. Pray for us as Jesus followers. Maybe we can go through the motions. Maybe we've been checking the boxes. Maybe we've been doing all the things of God, but really without God. And today you'd say, you know what? Today I recognize that I need to build an altar to the Lord. Today I recognize I need to do it your way, Jesus. Like I've been doing the work of God, but I've been worshiping. And I need to get back to the altar today. I need to repent today. I need to turn to you today, God. I've made it too much about me, God. There's some idols I need to cut down today. If that's you, just between you and the Lord, just raise your hand. Say, yes, Lord. Come on, Lord. 
return to you, Lord. You see it. God, use my life. God, shape my soul. God, change me. God, into alter my altar today. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. God, I'm just coming back to the heart of worship. Some of you in the house today, you say, yeah, it's me. I'm the guy that's had all the wrong altars. I'm the guy that's built the wrong altars. I'm the guy who grew up with wrong altars and I've been doing the same thing my whole life, but today I recognize I need to tear something down because Jesus is calling me to him. I need to build my first altar today to Jesus. I need to be that person that starts today and walks out of here with relationship with Christ. And that's you today. The Bible says the mercy of God will forgive your sin. He'll love you, be a child of God, chosen and forgiven and saved, a new creation because of Jesus, because of the mercy of God, you can make your first step backwards and be a living sacrifice to Jesus and say yes to Jesus and be forever changed for eternity to worship him and be who God's called you to be. If that's you today, you say yes to Lord Jesus, yes to forgiveness, yes to change. We just raise your hand high in this place. Don't look around and say, I need Jesus today. Come on, I see your guys' hands. Somebody else, I need Jesus today. Just between me and you. I'm gonna offer you guys in prayer. If that's you and you raise your hand, you put your hands down. I was gonna give you a prayer to pray. And this prayer is really just you cry at the altar. You use the words you want to use. You just cry out to your dad. You just cry out to your father in heaven. You cry out to Jesus. And, uh, but these words can you use the template. It's not the words that save you, but you just cry out to God and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh man, you're altering my life today. Man, I see it. I've been doing my own way, God, but run my own direction, my own path. I need to tear down some idols, tear down some worship to myself and God, give it back to you. God, I'm gonna be in the right place and the right posture today, God. Lord, thank you for loving me for mercy you showed me on the cross 2,000 years ago. Thank you so much, Jesus. I love you, God. God, I'm, I'm lifting my life to you, God, my praise to you, my worship to you, God, for the first time. God, I'm walking out of here changed by you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm never letting go of the foot of the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, church, give it up big today. Come on, let God hear your worship. Dude, we get a chance to worship uh, with our voice, with, with our hearts. I want you to invite you guys to stand to your feet. We're gonna do a song today. And uh, these altars are open, amen. And so if you wanna come down and let the Lord know you love them and you're just building a knee and just confess, repent, change, whatever you need to do, these altars are open to you. And we're gonna worship big, sing from your heart today, amen. Come on, guys.
and ever. All glory, all honor, all power to our God. Come on, give it to him. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name, it stands above the moon. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name, it stands above them all. Come on, sing your name. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name, it stands above. just that checkbox Christianity, amen. We have the amazing, incredible opportunity to set aside things in our life so that we can fully worship a God who deserves our praise. You guys can be seated. I'm just so glad that you are here. I'm glad you got to experience this with us here today in the house. Um, some of you today came here not knowing this God and you are leaving today being completely altered and changed by the truth of the gospel, by the truth that there is a God who pursued you, who fiercely wants a relationship with you. And that, if that is you today, if this is the very first time you took that step towards Jesus, I wanna be the very first person on behalf of Real Life to say congratulations. Can we give it up for those today in the house that were altered by God? so exciting and it is by far the best choice, the best decision you will ever make in your entire life. We want to make sure you're not taking those steps alone. We want to be there with you every part of the way and that's why we have a connection card near you. If you guys will check the box on there that says that you started a relationship with Jesus, we want to give you a gift. We want to drop something in the mail for you this week. It's a book called Begin um, and it just has a lot of really practical ways for you to get started on this journey. We also want to gift you with a Bible. So on your way out, would you make sure to grab one of those red bags that's back there? It has a Bible in there, along with another paper that has some resources for you um, just to get you started and for us to just connect with you on helping you um, get that incredible journey started. Let's give it up one more time for all of those today that gave it up for Jesus today. So for those of you that are here that felt a little altered by the message, how many of you felt altered by that message? It was so incredible. It was such a great and powerful reminder for us that it's not about our position. It's really about our posture. Amen. And so we get the opportunity now to take some next steps um, towards Jesus. And we want to give you some practical ways to do that. The first is an actual plan that we want to give you, a Bible plan. Um, if there's a QR code up there on the screen for you, if you will scan that code, it's just a really quick, easy, 
easy Bible plan for you to connect to. It's about five minutes a day for five days. What a great way to get started and just creating some space in your week for Jesus. So if you guys will scan that, um, just get started and join in a community together as a church to say, yes, we're going to take a step towards you, Jesus. Yes, we're gonna, we're gonna take down some altars in our life um, to put more of you in our life. Another offer that we have for you is just a way to get connected to others. We know that the people that are around us are directly related to the lives that we live. And we know, also know that some of you may be here each and every week and may see some faces, but you don't really know everyone here. And maybe you're not in a life group yet. We wanna offer an opportunity that's really special next week called a Sunday Social. And it's gonna be here at 4.30 p.m. right here at Kentucky Trail. And it's kind of a meet and greet situation. We're gonna have some desserts available for you. Maybe even you wanna bring your own dessert to share with some people here. Um, just a way for you to connect to maybe make some, put some names of some of those faces here around the building um, and just kind of set some roots down because we know that having people in our lives to connect with can help us to better connect with God in this community here at Real Life Church. The very last step that I have for you is if you are new here, maybe you were new last week and you came back this week, we're so glad that you're here. We want to see you back here next week. We want to be part of the opportunity for you to take some space for God in your week to maybe tear down some of those things in your life that are hindering you from fully fo fo fully focusing on Him. And so maybe next week is just your chance to just set some roots down here to create a family. We welcome you. And we also want to give you a gift too. So make sure on your way out, if you're new with us, check that box on that connection card and on your way out you can go by the new here booth and get a, a special gift from us to you just to say thank you for being here um, also if you're here and you're new this this gathering is just a gift to you we don't want anything from you today we're just glad that you chose to hang out here with us on Sunday morning a, a little earlier for some of us 15 minutes earlier we're just glad you came um, and if you are a member of our church if you come here regularly and you give regularly we're just so grateful Pastor Sean talked earlier about all of the life change that happened last week here on Easter Sunday, we had 555 people in attendance here, right? That's incredible. We baptized 12 people. We had several people come to Christ and we had 50 new guests. Isn't that incredible? And all, yeah, give it up. All of that took place because of your generosity. We're able to pull off big events like that because you're faithful and you're giving and we don't want it to stop with Easter Sunday. We wanna to continue to make an impact and be on mission for Jesus. So there's gonna be several ways to give um, that are up on the screen there. You can text any amount to 84321. You can go online to reallifechurchkc.com. Um, there's some buckets that are gonna be passing by in just a second. There's also a giving box at the back if it's more convenient for you to drop ca cash or check back there. And as always, if you're family is in immediate need of food or clothing or shelter, you're going through something tough right now, we want to bless you. So please reach into those buckets as they pass by and just grab any loose cash that you see so that we can bless your family this week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this incredible reminder today that we need to focus fully on you. And it's not about our position. It's not about checking the box of Christianity, but it's about putting ourselves in a posture of worship, taking things out of our life to help us fully focus on you. Help us this week to take some of these next steps. Maybe it's getting caught up with somebody in the church that we haven't really connected with before. Maybe it's just starting a Bible plan. Maybe it's just creating some altars in our weekly life to just fully focus on you and the love that you have for us, Lord. Bless this gathering. Bless this generosity, Lord. Help it to all just bring you glory as a reminder of how holy and incredible you are. I ask this in your name. Amen. Man, what a great day in the house. Thank you guys so much for dropping those connection cards in the buckets as they passed. Got one last thing for you. In real life, we love to serve, and we have a great uh, serving opportunity coming up with the Raypex School Foundation. We're going to be doing part of their adopted school, uh, and we're adopting Creekmore Elementary. So on April the 26th, from 5.30 to 7.30, we're going to help with their spring carnival. It's a spring fling carnival, I think. And what they're looking for, they've asked for help for, as volunteers to help serve, and there's a lot of different ways to do that at this carnival. And what it will do is allow the PTA to go hang out at the carnival with their kids. So if you guys have any questions or you want to get signed up, please get with Diane uh, Petrie, and we would love for you guys to join us uh, serving uh, the community in Raymore. So, hey, if you guys need prayer for any reason, we'll have a team member up here. We would love to pray with you. Can't wait to see you guys next week at 915 or 1045. And as always, remember, whoever finds Jesus discovers real life and purpose.